Smashing pump pumps. Oh! Hey guys, is eights and two going to reveal what happiness means once and for all? Let's get into the fields of rotting pumpkins and find out. Much like the Seasons EP from Weezer, Smashing Pumpkins are utilizing the streaming platforms to get songs on multiple playlists, and that's fine. Bill Corgan has to eat food, you know? Rotting pumpkins are not free. Once we get past the two-minute instrumental that opens Avalanche, we get a very 1996, yet clean guitar, sonic inflection. Yes, the synthesizers are indeed cranked up to 11, but the guitars and percussions do their due diligence as Billy Corgan's voice returns to a comfortable pitch and I'm transported to a better time and place than 2023 in my stinking office. Thanks, Smashing Pumpkins. You really helped me there. I need to... My shirt's inside out. It won't button. So the opening track is very strong. It's strong enough... Um, even though some of the Corgan isms have been chopped in a couple of minutes, um, they could have been chopped off, is what I'm saying. At least that BS at the beginning uh, wasn't a wasted track or an intro, because I am anti interlude and I'm anti wasted intros. We are moving on now. A good Charlotte song. Empires shows some thing and has me air drumming and rocking out in my underwear and an inside shirt. Mentions of zeros and harmonies cover religious allegories and intrigue that really entertain me in a way um, that, we, that we really need from the damaged Gord Band in 2023. We're what, two songs into this record and I'm already digging it more than Act One, which isn't bad in its own right, but this is a trilogy. Back to the air instrumentals for a moment. I got, I got something to tell you guys about air instrumentals. I play guitar in reality right-handed. I think, yeah, cameras make it, they make you see me backwards. I play guitar like a right-handed person, but I play air guitar left-handed, and I cannot reverse the strings. I can try to reverse the shirt while we're filming though. Neo Fight is a more sparse synth heavy track that harkens back to moments of, of whatever. Don't look at me. You can uh, you can name uh, can you name every Smashing Pumpkins album uh, with being like putting on the being put on the spot here? I don't think you can. But feel free to vent your rage in the comment section. Despite that, we are just rats in a cage. Yes, that is a cheap shot from someone who doesn't really like all of the catalog of the Smashing Pumpkins. But Billy and I had the same haircut, so us bald brothers have to stick together. And I'm about to tell you guys where the Smashing Pumpkins sit in my systematic ranking of all the musicians. Smashing Pumpkins are my 165th favorite band. I like 11 songs out of most of their catalog. I haven't added this one into the list yet, but that puts the Smashing Pumpkins at 7.33%, and they are sitting there in between Got some Neil Young at 163, some Drowning Pool at 164, Clint Black, oddly enough, at 166, Maroon 5, some Pink Floyd. Some, this is a weird list. Tim McGraw, Britney Spears, Train, Ben Folds 5, Lit. Okay, let's get back to the review. Moss sonically creates a blue cave of sound. It makes me feel like I'm climbing around with a bunch of Disney animated bats or perhaps avatars are sweeping in and attacking me um, as I try to save Mario for, from Bowser and Donkey Kong. I don't know why that is. Shinedown's unity reminds me of the TV show Lost, like every single word of that song. Put your hands in the air if you see me out there. I've been waiting for you day and night. Have you guys done your taxes yet? Yeah, yeah. And Nightwave focuses on a video game sound as well. And this is a dancey song if the Smashing Pumpkins ever had one in their catalog. I'm shaking my groove thing while picking out some interesting lyrical bones. There's love and death and doubt and leaving home. There's broken worlds, doom, too soon. It's kind of giving me a little bit of Green Day lyrical vibes. Uh, there's some good rhymes in here too. Not perfect. 
but dramatic and stuffed the gills with stuff. Now, the next song, there is, there is no, <laughs> there is no left field in space, right? There's no left lane in space, but Space Age, it walks a lonely road to slow down town and features some gosh darn perfect drumming. Some of the best drumming I've ever heard. And Billy Bob Corgi, he sings about owning time and, and there's probably an undercurrent of living in the moment as well. Next up, Smashing Pumpkins do an interesting cover of one of my favorite Sugar Ray hits. I'm kidding. We gotta, we gotta get back. I don't think that I could get right. That's a Weezer song. Okay, so I was just kidding. It's not a, it's not a cover. It's an original one that has high notes of quality rock and roll sounds. I, I feel like Billy is shooting for the stars on this one and succeeds in reaching outer space rock and roll slam dunks. Ooh, that just feels weird. Good job, Bill. Uh, this one is my favorite. This is my favorite song. Highlight right here. I am no Mark McGrath smash sensation. But I can hold my guitar right. It is artistically mesmerating, mesmerating, and some would say better, baby. That was Every Morning. The next song is called To the Grays, and this one had me very interested to see what Billy Corgan would be saying to our alien visitors. He wants to love them but not to lose to them in any kind of game. He's got this understanding with them where he's going to win every basketball game because old school Hollywood baseball, Jack Girardi is 10 feet tall. Old school Hollywood baseball, me and Frankie Avalon. That was some rock and roll history for you guys there. Then we have another song that's taking things back to the crunchy metal version of the Smashing Pumpkins and all of us old millennials born in 19, 19, 1985 have been salivating for this for years. Um, it's, it's, it's rockin' hard, man. It's a, it's a teachable lesson. It's, it's tight. It's tight. Very tight. Dog is licking my foot. It even sounds like 1979 for just like a real brief second there. Somebody's got Billy's faith back. We are talking about Beguiled, because he names drops, he names drops the band's name in the lyrics here. Whoa, wow. The 1980 guitars and drums reappear on the calling, and we're talking full Pink Floyd here. Gosh poop it, this instrumental is the best thing Billy and the Pump Pump Boys have ever done. It's four minutes and 30 seconds long, but it feels like it's four minutes and 20 seconds long. Without the smoke, I mean without the smoke. Chihuahuas are goats and I have hair and man is this a good tune. This album is a bit lopsided. In reverse, in reverse, it's got big butts and I cannot lie. I mean the back end is where it's at. That's what I was trying to say there. I just listen to a lot of music, man. Atom 2, I'm probably mispronouncing it because you know, Shelton Sheldon Gate there. That was a little bit dramatic on this here on the channel. Atom 2 is a return to form that actually lands where it was aiming for. Ending with a combination of acoustic guitars and Pink Floyd Rebel Flow. Uh, it's just a chart of greatness. And I am both bummed out and happy at once while listening to this. And that is what great rock and roll is supposed to do if it's worth its weight in unobtainium. I was able to obtain these emotions. Probably the highest score I've ever given to the Smashing Pump Pumps here on the channel, and it's a four out of five. 